Hi, Meow. Hi, Meow. And welcome back to our channel. I'm Black Cho. I'm Shift. And we are Shift Your Art. And in today's video, we are doing story time. But of course, the lecturer is going to be reading it because I suck at words. <laughs> Don't forget that this video is a little gory, so it is only for 18 plus people. Yeah, so please, if you're underage, get your parents' permission first before continuing watching the video. And if you don't have permission to watch it, just like it. And close it. And close it. <laughs> and subscribe if you're out. <laughs> you know. So now, for the smooth stylings of Electro's voice, I welcome thee. Thank you, sir. There was a family of four that was given a house that was in the middle of nowhere. As this house was so isolated, they were unable to sell the property. So the family decided to make this their holiday home. They made it a tradition to meet their yearly as a family. This year, one of the sons had a special someone they wanted their parents to meet. The son's name was Giichi, which was based on an old name with the meaning of righteous one. Giichi didn't bring anyone to meet his parents, but Asa, his partner, was different. As the couple arrived at the property, they almost ran into Giichi's parents' car as it was pitch black by the time they got there. Giichi and Asa walk up to the front door. Giichi pulls out an old key and unlocks the door. As he swings the door open, he announces, Sup fam, your boy Giichi is here! Asa glares at him, shaking their head in disappointment. His parents from the kitchen reply, Welcome honey, make yourself at home. We're just preparing dinner. Put your stuff in the lounge room for now and you can sort that stuff out later. Giichi shows Asa around the house, making their way to the lounge room. Passed out on the couch was a man that looked identical to Giichi. Asa, staring in disbelief, looking back and forth between the two, was gobsmacked. Giichi slowly turned towards Asa and sighs, oh, My dumb clone got out again. Giichi walks over to the couch and kicks the man on the legs to wake him up. The man groans and regains consciousness. He slowly sits up, and Giichi introduces him as his twin brother, Kainashi. The man on the couch looks at Asa and says, My name is Akio. Giichi is just a turd face. Asa laughs, flips their hair, and replies, Nice to meet you. I'm Asa. Akio stands up to shake hands with Asa, but goes pale and faints onto the floor. Asa quickly goes over to Akio and notices he is bleeding from his arm. For a moment, she stops and looks over at Giichi's freshly bandaged arm, as he had injured himself at the gas station earlier. Giichi calls out to Asa, Hello, are you okay? Asa blinks back into reality and tells Giichi, Go get my medical bag, it should be on top of your suitcase. Giichi runs over to their belongings and finds the med kit. Asa was trained in medicine and had some understanding on what to do. Asa tried to stop the bleeding and bandaged Akio up. Akio was losing consciousness again, so Asa tried to keep him awake by asking questions. Asa noticed an old coin as old as time itself on a chain around Akio's neck. Asa asked, can you tell me how you got this coin? But as soon as Asa reached over and touched the coin, a blinding light fills up the room. The light centers itself around Asa and Akio, with Giichi just standing there in absolute shock. Asa dips, disappears from the room, and Asa finds himself outside of the house. But Asa is not alone, as there are hundreds of rotten-skinned, human-like beings surrounding the house, moving towards the building. Another intense light shines in Asa's eyes, blinding them. Asa opens their eyes and it's bright, so bright that it hurts their eyes. Their eyes finally adjust and they see Akio running across red desert sands. Asa follows Akio heading towards a massive sandstone building. Asa notices though that Akio is not alone, a strange group of people are chasing after him. Asa sneaks into the sandstone building and sees Akio running towards the center when the floor gives away and he is sucked down into the ground. Asa, without thinking, runs into the room and jumps down the hole after him. Asa managed to land safely. They tried to find Akio but the room was filled with dust. Asa decided to try and hide for the time being as they could hear voices from up above. Asa tries to find a place to hide and as they are walking around in the dust they see something moving in the fog. Asa frightened, steps back and phases through a stone pillar. Shocked, Asa looked down at themselves and noticed their body isn't corporeal. They look up and put their hands in front of their face but they can see right through them. 
While doing this, Asa notices Akio standing in front of a lone pedestal in the center of the room. Akio approaches the pedestal. Asa, now being able to see, notices a coin standing on its side. Akio picks up the coin off the pedestal, and from the coin a projection appears. The projection scanned Akio and words from many languages were circling him, until they all turned into English. Then an ominous voice proclaimed, User Akio accepted. Uploading Hellhound manual into user's memory banks initiated. Akio's skin then begins to harden and appears to be turning into metal. His body starts changing shape and contorting. Then finally, a golden figure shaped like an Anubis warehand stands with two long, thin, straight blades in both hands. The voices from above start to get louder and louder. They begin to chant something in a foreign tongue. The ground begins to shake and from underneath Asa, the soil bursts open and a hand emerges. Asa screams and trips over themselves face first into the sand. They pick themselves back up to find the whole ground bursting open with undead zealots emerging from the depths below. None of which seems to even know that Asa is even there. Asa waves their hands in front of one of their faces but they don't even notice. Akio, now the metal hellhound, starts attacking the undead. They all start to run towards him but Akio is too powerful and fights them off. As he was about to finish off the last of them, a gunfire shot echoes through the whole cave. Followed by two more shots. Crimson red paints the rocks behind Akio. He looks up and lets out an intense howl, blood now dripping down his arm. The remaining undead begin to move onto Akio again, but this time he runs towards a hole in the wall. He passes Asa on the way, and he looks directly into Asa's eyes and winks. Then the whole cave disperses into a giant wave of fog, and a bright light engulfs the whole area. Asa now, back in the lounge room, opens their eyes and notices only moments had passed. Asa gathers himself and springs into action. Asa unravels the bandages on Akio's arm, the blood still pouring out of the wound. Asa pulls out what looks to be long tweezers from her med kit. She holds the wound open and as quickly as possible, Asa pulls three metal pellets out from Akio's arm. Asa covers the wound in some disinfectant and then proceeds to stitch the wound. Akio is now suffering from severe blood loss, and Asa, already prepared for this, grabs Giichi's arm and preps him for a drip. Then being identical twins, Asa knew that they must have the same blood type. Asa also gave themselves a drip, as they were a negative type O, meaning their blood would be compatible too. Asa successfully pulls off the double blood transfusion, and Akio's colour begins to return to his face. Asa sighs with the relief, he should be okay, for now. Kiichi looks at Asa confused and asks, What do you mean, for now? Asa doesn't reply, but instead screams out to the parents, There are a lot of very bad people coming who want to hurt your son. Barricade the house and hide yourselves. The parents come out from the kitchen to see the three of them in the lounge. The mother gasps in shock, and the father demands, Who are you, and what the heck are you doing here? Asa looks at the parents and just says, Hi, I'm Asa. I'm your son's partner. Now please listen to me and secure the house and hide yourselves. The parents hesitantly agree to the demands and barricade the house as best they can. Akio, now starting to regain consciousness, says thank you to Asa, but before Asa could reply, an undead from the vision breaks through a nearby window, and without thinking about it, Asa throws three scalpels towards the undead, and like a ninja, all three scalpels hit a different target. Asa turns to Giichi to get his help, but he is paralyzed with fear, just sitting there, repeating, Kainashi, Kainashi, over and over again. Kainashi being a term Giichi used against Akio, meaning useless or without worth. Akio manages to get up on his feet and the coin shines bright and it encases Akio, turning him into the hellhound from Asa's vision. Akio looks down at Asa and Giichi and says to them, I can't do this alone, please help me. Asa runs over to the kitchen and grabs the cutlery drawer and the block full of knives on the counter. Akira grabs Giichi by the shoulders and looks into his eyes. It's okay, brother. You can do this. Giichi looks up Akio and mutters, but, 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 I can't do anything. Akio smiles and tells Giichi, you know how whenever one of us gets injury, it is reflected onto the other as well, as he looks at both of their arms with the same injuries. Well, not only do our injuries reflect, but so does power. This coin's power is shining enough for two. Giichi wipes the tears off his face and nods his head. Giichi stands up and Akio asks, Are you ready to stop these monsters? 
Geechee stands and pumps out his chest and Akio starts to glow once more, this time the light encasing both of the brothers. Kiichi emerges as the Silver Moon Hellhound. He howls and proclaims, In the name of the moon, I shall punish you! Akio gleefully replies, Asagoi! <laughs> and they both laugh. Asa runs from out of the kitchen. They have overrun the rest of the house. We need to draw them away from your parents, Asa yells. The three of them charge towards the back window, and the two brothers jump through it first, so Asa wouldn't get hurt by the glass. The whole house is surrounded by hundreds of undead. The three try to fight off the relentless horde and were managing to stand their ground until a penetrating bang echoed through the air. Asa's skin turned ice cold as she knew exactly what that sound was. Asa saw the flash from the trees and instinctively jumped in front of the brothers, shielding them. The red crimson paint once again leaving its mark. The two brothers, distracted, were quickly taken down by the undead masses, their bodies torn apart, the undead ripping them from limb to limb, and only the sounds of their blood-curdling screams could be heard for miles. Asa's lifeless body lied dead nearby, to where the brothers' dismembered bodies were thrown together into some kind of meat pile. The blood of the brothers began to intertwine and mix, then start to glow. Every piece of them begins to be drawn into the light, and then, in a burst of radiant gold and stunning silver light, there stood one large hellhound, covered in a brilliant gold and icy cold silver metal, all of the undead instantly froze. The new hellhound raises its hand above Asa, and an emerald green energy pours out of its hand, filling up Asa's body. Rise, the hellhound demands, and instantly the once lifeless body begins to reanimate. Asa's eyes begin to open, but the hellhound then raises its other hand and a wave of energy radiates outwards. Then a singularity effect sucks all of the undead inwards, all of them being drawn into Asa's body. A new entity named Horde Asa rises, and the hellhound lets their new creation onto the gunner. So that's it. So I hope you like the story. I hope you enjoy watching the picture and stuff like that. It took me a month to do. I did a whole bunch of different te techniques of shading. I went and did the hair about a hundred times, the skin, everything. This character was just... I wanted to do this one to push myself, to put lots of details in. And when I woke up and I had them in my mind, and I just loved the idea of doing this thorn crown that was made out of bone. So I literally was just thinking, okay, I'll do four bones and do them really large. And then the more I was just like, no, I want to push myself more. I added more and more and more. And then I was like, maybe I can have bones sticking off the bones. And then I was like, maybe they can come out of the bones. So I just added like a detail of having them attached and then having holes in the bigger bones. And then I found that I had to shape them all individually. <laughs> And that's why I got to the fun part. <laughs> yeah, so most of the video is probably going to be me shading the bones and then going onto the hair, I wanted to add a lot of texture. It was really matted hair for me because I saw it and it was like, you know, it was undead hair. It was us's hair, but then it was everyone else's as well. Mm -hmm. So it was just this combination of all this hair and some re for some reason that's just black. Mm -hmm. So that, I wanted to do like... Um, Horn irises with the kind of fleshy bits and stuff. Yeah. Yes, and then like bloodshot eyes, and I want to put texture on the skin, and they have like different types of skin, like a Frankenstein kind of thing mm -hmm. on them. And yeah, and I wanted to concentrate on a bust because I wanted to focus on doing faces, and I wanted to put a lot of detail in a small area, like. When I do a big picture, I try and put details everywhere and I figured if I'm going to do something that's concentrated in a smaller area, I want to put just as much detail in an entire picture. Yeah, and it, turned, it looks really cool by the end. You can notice all the time and effort you actually put into it and the proportion of the face and stuff was a huge improvement. Like me, when I was watching from his first to the end, wow, like there is such a difference because 
you actually just sat there and you put the time and effort to actually think about where you're putting everything. Yeah. And it was just mind-boggling how well of an improvement it was just in one picture. Also, with the skin, I put textures in the skin yes, as well. Yes, did two coloured skin as well. Yeah, <laughs> because like... I wanted like a Frankenstein kind of thing where they're kind of fusing the flesh together to make a bigger asa. Yeah. And I think it turned out awesome. I love the way you ended up shading it and stuff as well. You like really focused on your shading with this one as well. You asked for my help. You looked at my pictures. You studied. You got so annoyed and frustrated. It's, it's like two <laughs> days of shading a face. Seriously. Mm -hmm. But at least you know you learned something, and that's the important part. As long as you, as long as you learned something, and. You continue this work. It's like yes. a new benchmark now. Yeah, I feel like I learned something. I like horns. I like hair. I don't like humans. <laughs> yeah. 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 You like drawing the alien weird creatures. So. Yeah. So they're all gonna have horns now and different colored flesh and stuff like that. And then like they're just gonna have hair everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's it. I hope you've liked it. Have a great existence. Yeah. Bye now. Nah.